Hey everybody, Sponge Murphy here. How are you all getting on today? And welcome back to this special update video on the Road to Gullman Painting Challenge. This is going to be an update kind of for the challenge and what way it's going to work going forward. So one of the things I wanted to kind of get organized this month was I'm going back to college. It's my fourth and final year. I need to kind of organize a way to successfully record content, good content and not kind of get in the way of everyday life because it's going to be pretty busy this year so i'm wanting to try and work out a way of like bulk recording and making it work so what i decided to do was to break down the road to gullman patent challenge into different series so we have like the first 10 videos which is already out that's going to be series one and maybe each series after that will probably be uh five episodes long it'll give me a chance to kind of bulk record two in advance and that is going to be a massive help to me in the long run if i want to make sure i want to keep this momentum going i'm having a blast painting these you guys really like it and i'm really appreciative of how everyone has uh supported the channel through this challenge it's been a great uh, thing to do and yeah so i've kind of set up my little photography area here that i mentioned in one of the other videos and i'm going to switch down to that to have a quick look at it and hopefully you guys will agree with the stuff that I say and hopefully you'll like the showcase of everything I've done for the Road to Goldman Payton channel so far. Everything looks awesome when it's set up down there. I really like it. So I hope you guys enjoy this update. Alright, so here is everything up on display and I really like how all these look. I've been doing this project for almost three months now, roughly that. And looking back now, I'm, I'm pretty proud of how much I did. This actually looks really cool. Like I'm not tooting my own, own horn or anything, but like... I really like how the, how everything looks all lined up. It's been a while since I've kind of started an army and looked at it this way. So I'm really proud how everything has turned out so far. And as, look at the backdrop. This is the start of the photography area I have uh, wanted to do out in the hobby shed for a while. So for a big thing like this, I need to get another... This is actually a pillowcase. I need to extend it out a bit more. But it's looking really nice. So yeah, three months I've been doing over this. And it's been a blast doing it. There's been 10 update videos for it. And, and at sometimes it has been stressful to try and... Uh, the, the plan was to get everything out uh, every week. But it's kind of morphed into like every week and a half. Just because things take a while to do and other stuff comes into it as well. So let's start off with what I did first for the challenge. And that was and that was the five Premier's Marines. And these, these are the guys in the back here. Now I did two videos for that. So I have ten of the Intercessors all together. And I had an absolute blast painting these for the first time. These models are so big and they're so much cooler than the smaller tactical marines but i love the old tactical marines but the scale that these guys are on i absolutely love them and i love the sergeant model everything with these is cool they're big they're strong the bases are bigger and i had a lot of fun painting these guys and then the, the second update video was on the reavers which are kind of like the scout guys now these were they're very similar except they only have like one shoulder pad their helmets are a lot cooler for definite and they have a lot more lighter weapons as well the third update video was the third update video was five more primaris marines so we looked at them and then the fourth one was the first hq model which was lieutenant calcius and um, this is one of the models that i want to do a little bit of effect on the sword here to give it a bit of a kind of a, like a power sword effect which didn't really go too well but i'm really happy how he turned out for the first character model i remember i had a lot of trouble getting the white on his knee pad and on his shoulder pad but it got me ready for the next couple of models down the line but i love this model and i think as far as i can remember this model had a choice of a helmet or you could use it without a helmet but i went for it without the helmet because it gives it a little just a little bit more character and then of course I went back, if you can see the guys in the back here, let me take these guys out so I'll block the view. We had the old tactical marines, now these guys were from the Petrella calc box I have, so these are 30k marines, now I did 5 of them up and it was unexpectedly so much different going back to painting the smaller marines compared to the primaris marines but i like these guys it was fun to go back to the smaller size and i've got a lot more of them in the back or in a box somewhere to paint up for the challenge as well and then of course everything went down towards the second hq of the challenge so far which was the primaris 
there we go. The Primaris Captain. This guy was awesome. He's the biggest model so far that I had done and he had a lot more gold on him. He had that power sword that I was kind of uh, afraid of starting off. But his robe turned out really nice. I was happy how that turned out. And of course that power sword which ended up turning out to be pretty decent. I was happy with it. You can't beat the old dry brush effect. There we go. So uh, like a lot of kind of not pressure but I was really afraid of that power sword to paint to get it to look really nice and I'm really happy how it turned out and then we came to the biggest guy we went from the biggest model to the bigger model which was another Betrayal Cal model this is the Contemptor Dreadnought which I had magnetized arms on and like I've had this guy for a couple of years and he was a lot of fun to paint um, by this point I was getting really fed up of painting uh, Calgar Blue or uh, I think it was Calgar Blue, I'm, I'm just, I mean, my head is so fried from painting blue lately. But he was a lot of fun, I was really happy to get this guy painted in the end. And it was fun to get the magnetised arms painted as well. So I have the other one around here somewhere as well. And a lot of metal on the back. So I enjoyed painting him. And then we come on to another, you don't have to move this guy out of the way. We come to another HQ choice which fell over. Which this one felt like I did a lot more recently. It felt like not too long ago that I did this guy. He was the librarian model. Which again I was a bit afraid of the robe. Because he had a big white robe. And I didn't want to do that. So I went with kind of a light brown colour. Which was. Which had. He has like magic powers let's say that. And that reminded me of. I think it was. I think his name is Scrag the Brown from The Hobbit. One of them wizards, and I like that kind of brown wizard look. So I was really happy how that turned out. And again, the power sword turned out pretty decent, which I was I was a bit more confident going into it this time. But I was a bit wary as if I could do another power sword that looked pretty decent. And he turned out okay. I like the yellow, the rocks that I tried to do. Like he's using his psychic powers, and the rocks were floating up. And you can kind of see the glow on the edges of it as if he's rising up out of the ground. And then to our final HQ choice of this series, we have the Chaplain. Now this was when I asked people to vote what to pick for. Everyone picked this one and no surprises why. When I painted this guy, he was so much fun to paint. And I wanted to have that light and dark um, feeling to him. So I went with the black armor like Chaplains have. But with a white kind of creamy robe. And he turned out pretty decent. I was really happy how he turned out. And um, the book here on the side turned out really good. And there wasn't anything really specifically hard to paint about him. Except I wanted to get the bones in his chest to look just right. And so it would be different looking from the cream colour of the robes. And I'm really happy how he turned out. And then finally we come to the aggressors. Which were the last ones I painted. And they were... I remember getting to this point and I was like, these are just big space, painting wise. They're the exact same as painting uh, the rest of the marines. The only thing is they're just in bigger size. I would have liked different weapons on them. Um, just to make them stand out a little bit more. I'm not mad on the kind of the flamer weapons. They're okay. But once these guys were painted up, I started to appreciate them a bit more. They're, they're massive. They're so bulky, which I really like about them. I like big bulky guys, big bulky models like that. And they were a lot of fun to paint. So that is the Series 1 finish. And I want to be jumping straight into the next series. And let's get these reavers back in. I don't know how many points this is. If you guys can roughly tell me what they are, um, I have no idea. Like, like a basic points with like no upgrades or anything like that. But uh, thanks to everyone for watching the challenge. It's been a wild ride getting all these done. And I'm going to start out series 2 now pretty soon. Because I know the, next, the first video I ended it is going to be painting up the terrain. I talked to a couple of guys about that. You guys all said yeah it's good to switch it up every now and again to do some terrain. So that's going to be on the next video. But hopefully you guys like this whole series and hopefully you'll keep checking it out more in the future. I definitely had a lot of fun doing it and I can't wait to get more of these guys done. So if you guys like this video, make sure to hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe if you haven't. And once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next video.